Hello everyone. My name is Deep Datta and I'm an associate counsel at Internet Freedom Foundation. Today, I'm here to take you through the timeline of the Arokya Setu app, which has been launched by the Indian government for COVID-19 related health surveillance. The app was officially launched through a PIB press release on 2nd April 2020 and has quoted controversy at every stage of its short lifespan. The app has been heavily criticized by experts for collecting sensitive health data and real-time location data without adequate legal or technical safeguards. The problems with the Arogya Setu app have been explained in detail in IFF's working paper on privacy prescriptions for COVID-19 technological interventions, and these can be divided into three main critiques. First, the functioning of the app is not governed by any legislative framework which would guarantee that personal data collected by the app is not used for law enforcement or commercial purposes. Second, the purposes that the app seeks to achieve go well beyond proximity exposure notification and any inaccurate risk assessment by the app may force a person into quarantine and deprive them of their livelihood and freedom of movement. Third, the app's technical design choices, such as its centralized model, weak anonymization techniques, and collection of GPS location data do not comply with international best practices, and they increase the risk of the app becoming a tool for mass surveillance even after the pandemic is over. When the app was first launched, government officials reassured the public that its use would be encouraged, but no one would be forced to download the app. However, it was soon made mandatory for all employees of Prasar Bharti, armed forces and gig workers. Even among government officials, there seemed to exist concerns about the security of the app. For instance, after making Arogya Setu mandatory, the army advises its personnel to avoid using the app in office premises, operational areas and sensitive locations. Finally, on Labor Day, that is 1st of May, the Arogya Setu app fully transitioned from voluntary to mandatory after it was made compulsory for all public and private sector employees and all persons living in containment zones. This was done through guidelines issued by the Home Ministry under the Disaster Management Act. After these guidelines were issued, failure to download the Arogya Setu app could be punished with imprisonment under the Disaster Management Act and also the Indian Penal Code. To fight back against this coercion, IFF, along with 45 other organizations and over 100 individuals, wrote a joint letter to the government on 2nd of May opposing mandatory use of Arogya Setu for workers. This joint representation was signed by a broad swath of Indian society, including trade unions, people's movements, public health experts, former civil servants, activists, academics, technologists, journalists, lawyers, and many others. To implement the guidelines issued by the Home Ministry, authorities in districts like Noida have also issued orders under Section 144 of the Criminal Procedure Code compelling people residing or entering Noida to install the Arogya Setu app. Failure to do so would be criminally prosecuted under Section 188 of the Indian Penal Code. On 6th of May, the decision of the Noida authorities was challenged by Ritwik, an advocate who is based in Noida, and IFF provided assistance for this representation. In particular, the order by Noida authorities was challenged on the ground that Section 144 cannot be used to impose positive obligations upon persons as its scope is limited to directing persons to abstain from doing certain activities. A copy of the representation sent to the Noida authorities was also made publicly available to serve as a template for citizens who may wish to send similar representations to their local authorities. In addition to sending representations to executive officials, IFF has also engaged with legislators on the issue. On 8th of May 2020, we wrote to the Parliamentary Standing Committee for Information Technology and requested the committee to conduct urgent hearings about privacy and security concerns associated with the Arogya Setu app which is operating in a legislative vacuum. In particular, we urge the committee to adopt a multi-stakeholder approach and depose not just government officials, but also experts belonging to the fields of public health, computer science and digital rights. We remain hopeful that an objective evidence-based parliamentary report, authored on the basis of expert inputs, can help advance institutional engagement on the issue.
mandatory imposition of Arogya Setu in all workplaces was challenged before the Kerala High Court on 11th of May 2020 by Mr. Jackson Matthew, the managing partner of Lita Industries, which employs over 50 people. IFF provided legal assistance for the petition filed by Mr. Matthew, which was also accompanied by an expert affidavit by Professor Subhashish Banerjee from IIT Delhi. After the petition was filed by Mr. Matthew, the government released a data access and knowledge sharing protocol for the Arogya Setu app the very same day. However, our clause-by-clause analysis of the protocol has revealed that despite using buzzwords like necessity and proportionality, the protocol fails to meaningfully incorporate these principles in practice and allows people's personal data to be used for vague, broad and constantly evolving purposes. The petition was listed before the Kerala High Court for hearing on 12th of May 2020 and during the hearing, the court directed the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology to file a reply and to state on record that data collected by the Arogya Setu app will not be misused. The petition was supposed to be listed next on 18 May, but one day before that, on 17 May, the Ministry of Home Affairs issued revised guidelines which only required installation of Arogya Setu in workplaces on a best efforts basis for those employees who already have compatible smartphones. Two days after the Home Ministry revised its stance on Arogya Setu, the Uttar Pradesh government also issued guidelines which encouraged use of Arogya Setu but did not mandate it. The Section 144 order issued by Noida authorities a day later, on 20th May, went one step further and did not reference the Arogya Setu app at all. These are small but significant victories which provide much-needed motivation for the long road ahead to make Arogya Setu fully privacy-respecting, transparent and accountable. We at IFF will continue working on this issue because the story of Arogya Setu is far from over. As the lockdown is gradually lifted, we may see the app being made mandatory for railways, airports, metro and other public facilities. If you found this video and our broader research and advocacy around Arogya Setu useful, do consider visiting our website and donating to us. We draw our strength and legitimacy from ordinary Indians like you who fund us to defend fundamental rights in the digital age. Thank you for watching this video and do follow us on social media to stay up to date with all latest Arogya Setu related developments.